focus and I would dig as deep as I can. It was almost like watching a dream, like it was in slow motion. The bike flipping through the air. I mean, you don't see crashes like that very often. He just was holding his leg, and we knew it wasn't good. Villapoto broke his tibia and fibula in the crash and would have to be flown to Seattle so a specialist could reconstruct his ankle with five plates and 47 screws. The six-month recovery process would be the most difficult period of Villapoto's career. Him laying in that hospital bed for so long, he withered away, trying to stay off the painkillers so that he didn't get addicted to that. The pain and how long it took and the therapy he had to go through. I mean, you'd question if he was even ever going to want to ride a bike again. The power that our bikes are making, the speeds that we're going, the difficulty of the tracks, the things that can go wrong. The only thing that goes through my head is injury, actually getting hurt, you know, badly. Racing Supercross, you have to stay sharp. You can't not be on the bike. So your risk factor is at an all-time high all the time. A great opportunity showed up. Ryan calls me. He says, hey, Eldon's not working with James no more, and I can work with him. What do you think? I had worked with Eldon with James, and I said, it's a no-brainer. He's the best guy in the sport, and he's proven. Did it with Ricky, did it with James. If you have this opportunity, you need to jump on it now before someone else does. When Ryan approached me, I was actually worried. I didn't think he had the physical capabilities anymore to do the job right. I took him to a specialist that actually looked him over and ran tests to see if that foot was going to be enough motion, enough feel. The body forgets pain. I forgot by the time I was able to start walking and, all right, well, when can I ride type of deal. There's a trust factor, too, that he has to trust me. At first, he was a little like, I, you know, I don't know. I, re I really don't know. I looked him in the eyes, and I said, I think we can be ready. And that's probably the only time you could see he actually believed. Villapoto and Baker began training together just three months before the start of the 2011 Supercross season. Ryan Dungey came into 2011, fresh off a Supercross title, outdoor title, and Motocross of Nations victory. Chad Reed came into the year on a team built around himself, and James Stewart was out to prove that he could beat his former trainer. Going into Anaheim, 2011, no one expected anything after Ryan broke his leg so bad. Everyone was saying, nah, he's done, he's career ending, his competitors saying it. There's a pass for the lead! From round one to round 10 in Indianapolis, Villapoto was the most dominant rider in the series, winning five races. Second fight falls for Ryan Villapoto! But his 26 point lead in the championship would shrink dramatically by round 16 in Salt Lake City, leaving Chad Reed, Ryan Dungey, and James Stewart all with a shot at the title. We went to Salt Lake. Ryan, he was kind of in a weird mood that day, and my temper was getting short. I got on him and said, This is it. If you're going to be a champion, you need to make this happen. Ryan Villapoto has just set the fastest lap of the main event. So Villapoto now finally is coming to life here. Reed makes a mistake. Villapoto oh, goes that opens the door. Up Stewart's on the down. Stewart is down. There goes Villapoto. Villapoto to the checkered flag. He lights the candles and extends his points lead. Confidence went back up again. Going into Vegas, he had a cushion, brought the championship home. Villapoto's first Supercross championship propelled him to arguably the most successful year ever experienced by a Supercross racer. In the following months, Villapoto won the Outdoor National Championship, led Team USA to a Motocross of Nations victory, and completed a three-race sweep at the inaugural Monster Energy Cup. And Ryan Villapoto has done it, and he's a millionaire after just one race. His million dollar reward was the largest prize for a single race in the history of the sport. It's a, a lot of work, there's a lot of risk involved. When I win, everybody that's in my group wins. 
from my mechanic to my wife to my trainer. It takes work from all of us. And when we do win, there's nothing better. While 2011 was the most successful year of Villapoto's career, he was still estranged from his family. His parents, brother, and sister merely watched from the outside. Over two hard years of... Yeah, it was pretty nasty. I you mean, were, I mean a you were hurt, right? I mean, yeah. Oh, totally. Of crying, me crying every day. It was pretty bad. I miss my kid. It would make my life easier if I were just the best guy and I won every time. You just go through your life and it'd be relatively easy. You wouldn't second guess or think about really anything. But to know that you have to show up every weekend ready to race and not only race, but it's gonna be a brawl. Other guys are gonna be right there, Chad or Ryan. That wears on you. In 2011, Ryan Villapoto won every championship he entered. As the 2012 season opener at Anaheim approached, a second straight Supercross championship was the expectation. The bike was better, he was better, and we were just building. 2011 was coming off that injury. He was able to win everything, so we went into Anaheim and came out winning. Pull shot, go to the number one, Ryan Villapoto, And he's making a big, huge statement here tonight. Following his victory at Anaheim, Ryan Dungey, James Stewart, and Chad Reed each found the top step of the podium at the next three rounds. Never before in the history of Supercross had four former champions won consecutive races to start the season. The speeds kept going up and up and up because these guys were just pushing each other to the limit. Dallas, when Chad was riding right on Ryan's rear wheel, Ryan had told me he was going as hard as he could, but he said if they both rode that pace, someone was going to go down, so he was just about to let him by. The crash at Dallas would end Reed's season with a torn ACL. It was the continuation of a season marred by injuries. At Los Angeles, Trey Kennard had been eliminated from the title hunt with a broken back. Ryan Dungey would break his collarbone at practice, and James Stewart would suffer a series of crashes and injuries throughout the season. And this championship takes another twist, and there goes Stewart again! With eight victories, Villapoto wrapped up his second consecutive Supercross title at round 13 in Houston. Never had a rider clinch the championship so early in the 40-year history of the sport. It was a huge thing for Ryan to do. The last time someone won back-to-back -back titles was Ricky Carmichael. Two rounds after clinching the title, the series moved to Villapoto's hometown, Seattle. But the main event would see the end of the most dominant stretch of Ryan's career. The first time carrying the number one plate in front of his hometown crowd, and he is crawling off the track. Washed the front end out, but his leg was already stuck to the ground, so his leg stayed one way, and the front tire went that way. That angle just popped his knee out. Ryan's second ACL replacement would be his third major surgery in four years. Training is the only effective injury prevention method in Supercross, and the only way to keep up with your competition. And Ryan Dungey! completes the year with his fourth victory. When Ryan Dungey returned from his broken collarbone, he won the final two races of the Supercross season, and Davey Millsaps was able to finish a career best second in the series. Villapoto's trainer, Alden Baker, put him on a bicycle three days after his surgery, beginning an eight-month campaign to Supercross in 2013. No cell phones in the dojo. You know what dojo means? What does it mean, Jacob? Place of learning. Thank you, Masa. Place of learning. Now let's learn how to get fit. Remember when he said, we do 100 push-ups, can we not go to the gym? And I said, bring it on. He did 99. <laughs> 99. <laughs> and we went to the gym. <laughs> it's just a fond memory that I had. He hates to train. He doesn't get out there and say, you no, know I'm gonna go ride my bike today. I'm gonna come back, pump out some minutes on the rower, and then head to the track. He dreads it. You ain't got the shoulders for that. You can barely hold your arms up for this. And now you wanna go like on Mayweather. What was that Irish guy that he used to challenge? You look like that guy. <coughs> Hatton. Then he got onto alcohol or something. From 2000 to 2006, 
Professional cyclist Alden Baker trained Ricky Carmichael to five Supercross championships. Incessant training has been the norm among Supercross riders ever since. 15 minutes. Are you for real? You just said 10. You don't listen. I'm gonna have to clear that, clear that wax out of your ears. Yeah, he did ruin the sport. Early 90s, they were racing and hanging out and having a good time all the time. I think they did train, but it's not to what it is now. Today, a Supercross rider must be able to maintain a heart rate, 93 to 95 percent of its capacity, for the entire 20 minutes of a race. Come on, focus! Numbers that resemble the cardiovascular capabilities of endurance cyclists, requiring a training regiment capable of straining any relationship. You have short term memory. You can't count reps <laughs> when we're in the gym. Don't let me come and beat you up now. We can fight if you want. Oh, dude, I'll work you over so easily. If we didn't have these blowouts or fights, then somebody's doing something wrong because it's too easy then, I guess. Whether he hates it or he doesn't hate it, Ryan needs the discipline. Eldon has taken over for what his dad has done. Wouldn't care who if it's Ryan Villapoto or not. Eldon's gonna come in there and do his job and is the best at what he does. It's changed Ryan's career. Yeah, it hasn't been that bad for you. I told you, you sit on the couch, do a little program work, come here, boss everybody around. Oh, Casey starts, oh yeah, Ryan, 15, go back home, tea and scrumpets, and back at it again, boys. That's right. That's why I'll be lining up at A1. Why not? I'll be lining up for you at A1. <laughs> and then when I fail, you're like, and then you'll be mad at me. That'll be an understatement. Although Ryan Villapoto is the most successful Supercross racer of his generation, his most dominant years were spent with strained relationships with his parents, brother, and sister. But things began to change throughout the process of rehabbing his latest injury and training for the 2013 Supercross season. It was pretty bad. I didn't talk to him for eight months, a year. And then would try and then, you know, things would get bad. I wouldn't talk to him for a couple months and then try again. I didn't talk to Ryan for three years, when I was 13 to when I was 16. Not one word. I think the first birthday present I got from him was this necklace. And I remember I got it and I just started bawling my eyes out because I was like, oh my God, he likes me. <laughs> Next summer, I went to see him in Florida, and I think that's when the rebuilding started to happen. It was his way of reaching out to us. In the summer of 2012, Villapoto increased his support of his younger brother Tyler's racing program, and later that year, invited his parents to live in his second home in Southern California, giving his father the opportunity to serve as Tyler's practice bike mechanic and participate in Ryan's daily racing routine. I'm proud that he's grown up to be the man he is. I didn't go to the practice tracks for about two and a half years. And now I started going to the practice tracks. Really got to see how focused he is on his training, and he's pretty good. He's real good. <laughs> this year, actually, when he got back from his knee surgery, the first day back was unreal. I swear, when he was hurt, he got faster. Yeah, we are the day before Anaheim won, and everything comes to this day. We're just going over our bases. Just a little bit of endurance, a little bit of speed stuff, starts. They are ready, and they know they've put in all the work. There's nothing more that we could have done. I expect to defend this title. We are in the best place we have ever been. I don't know how much lift you're going to get off that little thing and go double and then go where the guys are standing, go from there and then three into the turn. Injuries end most Supercross careers before the age of 30 and the monetary rewards of professional racing will seldom guarantee security after retirement. Facts that drive the search for safer, faster racing lines during a track walk, the pursuit of optimal suspension settings on their machines, and animosity towards other competitors. Maybe some boxing I see, they truly have like, you know, some hate. And that's basically what it is here. We don't talk to each other. We all know our sport's short. It's not NASCAR. We don't have a cage. The more money you can make, the better you're off in the end. 
I want to leave it at two softer, go out, ride it in the next practice, come back, go two stiffer, and then open it up. From 2009 to now, it's a huge difference in his attitude and how serious he takes the actual bike part of it. Go all the way back. I want to try that. Two out. Nobody knows but Ryan how hard he's hitting that jump or the actual feeling that's coming through his hands or his feet. If you're just watching with your eyes and guessing, it's impossible to win at this level. Got a boy, dude. You ripped the, that one? ripped the 55 out. Two. Stu was 56 2. Like, I was going to tell him to slow down. He hit him so fast. Yeah. Well, if you watch practice, he was awesome. I think he's going to win. <laughs> That's my boy. 2013 will be Villapoto's first 450 class season with his family integrated into his life. But the satisfaction that fact brings has no place in the mind of a racer. We get hired for one reason, and that reason is to win. You almost become numb. How hard it was to get to where we are now injuries, we have to stay so fit. The day of the race, we have three different autograph signings and then three practices. Everything you deal with, everything you go through, it has become numb to certain things. Ryan's not some outgoing character that's gonna be in front of the camera, he's the best guy, says all the right things. That's probably never gonna be Ryan. Ryan's a racer and a champion. From Angel Stadium in Anaheim, the season opener! I did miss out on a lot during my childhood because Ryan was racing every weekend and people say all the time we hit the bad end of the deal but in my eyes I didn't because I got to see my brother do something that he loves and I got to see him be something great. Come on Ryan! Go, 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 go. Who's going to get the start? That looks like Kennard with a great one on the outside! Millsap grabs it! Oh, where you at, bud? Where you at? Finally, we see Villapoto. Villapoto is as far Still back as 12. And he's got a lot of work to do here. Here comes Villapoto on that green Kawasaki with the red number plate, sporting the number one. Oh, oh Villapoto oh, off the track. Big mistake, it goes over the berm. All right, ride smooth, buddy, ride smooth. Come on. Villapoto now on the back of James Stewart. Villapoto alongside of Stewart. Oh. And he goes down again. Ryan Villapoto came to the first race at Anaheim, hoping to begin his campaign for a third straight Supercross championship, a feat that would put him among the top three riders in the history of the sport. Ryan started the race in 13th, slid off the track on lap four, and was battling for seventh with James Stewart on lap eight. Come on, Ryan, ride smooth, buddy, ride smooth. Come on! Villapoto now on the back of James Stewart, Villapoto alongside of Stu, oh. and he goes down again! Oh. And he's limping! Both and Villapoto was limping as he got back to his bike. It's going to be between these two for the win here. Here comes Kennard! He makes the move up the inside! Villapoto has more trouble! Man, this night has just gone from bad to worse for him. Make it tough to three-peat right now. Here's Millsap! Oh, Kennard goes sideways! After a second crash, Ryan finished the race in 16th without his right glove and goggles. That was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like that. Of the 57 450 Supercross class races Villapoto has started and completed, it was the second worst finish of his career. Got a whole year, dude. We've been in worse positions. Really, really frustrating to know what he has in the tank and what he is capable of and then to see such a mess. You're the reigning two-time Supercross champion. You need to focus on you. You should have dealt with him quickly. If this was like maybe five years ago, I probably would have been in there, what'd you do, what'd you do? He's hard on himself, so he doesn't need me to pour gas on the fire. On the good side is he finished, he got some points. Most guys that are riding around without one glove and goggles and everything else would quit. He looks unbelievable in practice, trailing the corners like no other. I'm like, how is he making it? Because he was going so fast. It's not over. He can come back from this. Villapoto left the opening round, 20 points behind race winner Davey Millsaps. In order to become the fourth rider in history to win three straight Supercross championships, 
he will have to close that gap in the upcoming rounds. The same night Ryan finished 16th, his younger brother Tyler did not qualify for the opening round of the Amsoil Arena Cross Series. Tyler is trying to revive his racing career after a four-year hiatus. You need to go around the corner faster. Instead of like slowing down, slamming it like that, that takes all your momentum away. On a daily basis, the Villapoto family will work together and share their evenings for the first time in two years. Is it worth it? Yeah, I think it's worth it. <laughs> well, just to be a part of it and, you know, everyone tells me, oh, you're living the dream. I must be living the dream. I am. I would never have thought I would race a motorcycle again in my life. If you were to tell me that a year and a half ago, I'd have literally probably got mad at you because you're saying things that I, I wish could happen. I really can't explain how excited I am that things are shaping up and looking positive for our family. The couple years where nobody was there, you could see there was a void. The Christmas thing, that's all he's ever wanted was that scene. My prayers were answered. I used to pray for this every night. Like, just, I just want, like, a normal family, like, to be together, so. People have problems and struggles, so this is normal. Everybody knows that everybody's family is not perfect. Ryan Villapoto will labor for the coming years and likely will continue his ascent to Supercross greatness. But no matter the extent of his status as an icon, happiness will only come from those who know Ryan for his humanity. I look forward to the day that he's not the racer. Yeah, I don't want to see him get hurt anymore. And he's just, you know, our kid.